One of the things that we're also most proud of, and we know that our city in particular, Richmond, has an issue with childhood obesity. And uh, recently, we were ranked as one of the most obese cities in the United States, and we do believe that our children are at risk, and the future of our city is at risk. So childhood obesity with the Move in Maine program, we're aligned with 26 organizations throughout the community to actually promote wellness, to promote exercise, and to promote education on healthy eating. Um, we recently donated $120,000 to uh, the city schools to put Move in Maine in the schools, which helps not only with giving exercise, but also education around math programs. Diabetes is a huge second issue, and one of the reasons I think diabetes is becoming even more of an issue for our children in particular is because of the obesity factor. In the East End, we know there's a huge need for diabetes education. There's a need for wellness. There's a need for fitness centers and safe places for our children. And I think you'll hear today from Sister Anne Marie Mack how this proposal will help with that. In addition, free health screenings are critical and important. By time with the Redskins, they promote men's health and they promote health screenings for men. And one of the things I've said to the men in, the, um, and in some of the meetings we've been in is that you're not always the greatest at getting your health taken care of. Usually there's some woman that kind of makes you go and get your health done. But if we tie you to an NFL sports team, we do believe that health screens will become something that you'll do more. We know the Washington Redskins did, did this in Washington, D.C., and they had over 2,500 men show up for prostate screenings. So it's something we're excited to bring to the community that we think is lacking. In addition, the SEED program, for you that don't know, the SEED program is an initiative in the East End where we're helping to try to bring grocery stores and entrepreneurs into the city. There was a grant, we gave a grant last year to start some businesses in the East End, and you'll hear hopefully on um, Wednesday of this week where we make an announcement for additional grants to bring businesses into that community. In addition to that, one of the things that the Redskins is prominent in is helping with concussions in sports. We're very fortunate to have sports trainers that work in many of our schools in the city of Richmond and work with your um, athletic schools. One of the things that we do is we do a baseline concussion screen and for and, and physicals. And all of the money that, that um, we receive, we give back to the school so that, in fact, the schools can use that for sports equipment and other things. So we really feel that the Redskins project and with the city ties immensely to our mission, and it also allows us to provide even more outreach services to our community. Thank you. So there are three sites involved in the um, economic development package. The first site is the West Hampton School site. This site is at the corner of Libby and Patterson, and it is just south of St. Mary's Hospital. I believe most of you know that St. Mary's Hospital is in Henrico County. It's about one foot over the line. But this facility and the expansion would be an expansion of health services in the city of Richmond. It's a four-acre site that would be leased to um, Bon Secours on a long-term basis for $5,000 per year. Bon Secours would also agree to maintain the playing fields that are on the west edge of the site, the left-hand side of the site. They'd agree to maintain those fields for about $35,000 a year. That's a cost that the city is now incurring. Um, in addition, on the site, um, in addition on the site, in the very back, northeast corner of the site is a top lot. And the top lot has been there a long time. Bond Support is committed to improving the, to upgrading the equipment and to relocate the top lot to a location probably about two blocks away. Um, in addition, I point out that Bond Support is working to retain the school structure, if not the entire structure, the facade, because they know that's been an issue of importance to the community. The school was built in 1916 and has it's a beautiful face, and Bon Support has said if there is a way they can retain it and as much of the building as possible, they're going to do that. In terms of the development at this site, they are looking at, and I realize everyone here can read, they're looking at about 
75,000 square feet of capital investment of about $24 million, and there would be 120 new jobs with an $11 million payroll at this site. The second site we've talked about is the Bon Secours Hospital that is currently in the city limits. This is in the east end along just off of Nine Mile Road. That's Richmond Community Hospital. The proposal there is to add 25,000 square feet of space to develop a fitness and wellness center, a blood pressure center, possibly dialysis, and other physician offices. The investment, capital investment, will be about 8.5 million, 75 new jobs, and a payroll of 6.7 million dollars a year. This is an area of the city that is historically and currently underserved. I know that Ms. Newville and Ms. Robertson can talk about this more eloquently than I can, but it's a very big concern on the city's part to provide good health services to all parts of our city, and this is a seriously underserved part. The third site in the package is the Lee Street site, and it's the parcel of property behind the Science Museum of Virginia. The Commonwealth of Virginia owns the site and would lease it to our Economic Development Authority for about $30,000 a year. This is a 17-acre site, and we think it's a comparable lease payment to the amount at the West Hampton site. On the site would be two side-by-side -side practice fields, a drill field, a field house that would include locker rooms, training rooms, weight rooms, and office space. The office space in part would be leased by Bon Secours. They would commit to a 10-year period with about $6.3 million in commitments over the 10-year period. Those, that $6.3 million would be both in rent payment as well as in sponsorships. Um, if you were looking at the portion of that amount of money that will be done as a sponsorship amount, you need beyond the market lease rate. It's about $3 million that Bon Secours is committing to this site so that it can be developed. This area, many of you are familiar with the area. It's in just off North Boulevard corridor. It's, as the crow flies, less than half a mile from the diamond. It's um, very close to Broad Street, so we think it's a great area for both Broad Street and North Boulevard in terms of retail and commercial development. We have Chris Chamura, economics, do an impact analysis of just the three-week training camp. That alone, they believe, would generate 100,000 leisure visitors a year, 40% of whom would stay overnight. Average stay of about two nights, generating something like $130 per visit. In addition to that, people who come just for the day would generate about $44 per visit. All told, the annual visitor spending from the three-week period would be $6.4 million, and this is for the city of Richmond proper. Um, also, the Redskins would spend about $2.1 million annually for their team, their staff, lodging, meals, etc. Um, the projected annual in impact from that is about $8.5 million a year and a potential for 81 new jobs. Also mentioned with the Washington Redskins, they have a charitable foundation that's done great work in this community even before they started looking at Richmond as a place for their training camps. Specifically, they've developed fields at Hotchkiss and at Blackwell schools, and those have been very important things for those communities. They have reading programs, they have health and wellness, and they do a lot with coaches in the community. These are some of the economic development criteria we used for in the location of the site. The mayor had selected and um, impaneled a steering committee to assess the several sites. I think there were about a dozen sites we looked at, and the Science Museum site was the top choice. It, we think it would have good impact for that area of town, for property values, for tourism, and good economic development they all around. In summary, 
the three sites would include an additional 115,000 square feet of development, $42 million in investment, capital investment, over 200 new jobs, and $19 million in payroll. Again, the economic impact would be about $8.5 million per year. And with that, Madam President, I'd like to ask Rich Johnson to uh, talk about the role of the Economic Development Authority. Rich, in addition to being the chair of the Economic Development Authority, Rich is the chairman, CEO, and president of the Wilton Companies, which is commercial real estate company.
Sisters of All Socor view this from a mission perspective. This proposal supports our mission of providing comprehensive and quality health care services to the residents of the communities we serve and especially those who are underserved. It will create good jobs with competitive wages and benefits as well as build strong relationships with local vendors and suppliers to the residents of our community. And lastly, this partnership allows us to work with local government and the community to capitalize on opportunities that will strengthen our economy and enhance the quality of life for our residents. We feel that this project and proposal not only meets each of these goals, but will build upon our current work with the City of Richmond. By way of background, Bon Secours sponsored a community planning charrette in 2009 at St. Mary's Hospital and in 2010 in the East End of Richmond. These conversations, these charrettes, launched discussions with residents <coughs> and city officials around future developments by Bon Secours at St. Mary's Hospital and Richmond Community Hospital. Our recent conversations with the city would move forward these developments and add a third component to bond support investment and active participation in the Red Skin Training Camp Facility. This combined package allows us to expand much needed services in the East End as well as the West End of the city and at the same time create jobs and tourism for the city of Richmond. Bon Secours is excited, honored, and proud to be part of this initiative and to be able to continue to bring more good health to the communities we serve. So, on behalf of Bon Secours, I thank you for your consideration and ask for your support for this initiative. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, that ends our presentation. We're all happy to answer questions now at the end of the public hearing. Are there any questions at this time for uh, representatives? Uh, Madam President. Yes, Mr. I, I think it's important to public hear my question of the, uh, the earlier meeting. Um, uh, is there in any way, in any of this deal, that Bon Secure is exempt from paying taxes? It is affiliated with the Catholic Church, and I think uh, uh, that question has not been cleared up. I think it's been cleared up. Yeah, Mr. Councilman, thank you. I'm Jim Dunn with Bon Secure, and we did discuss this earlier today. Bon Secours has both a not-for-profit and a for-profit entity, but in this particular instance, we would turn to a private developer to actually build the buildings that we're talking about, both at Richmond Community and at St. Mary's, which would, in fact, put those properties on the tax roll. I think it's also important to note that in both instances, while we have a, a firm right now doing projected uses and we will do an economic impact study, but first of the year we'll be able to present to city council and to the community proposed uses for those facilities. Uh, once that's done, then the very public part of this uh, kicks in when the community and the city have the opportunity to look at those proposals and we certainly understand that until we go through that process, uh, we will not get either the zoning or a building permit to build anything. So we want people to know that this process, in fact, moving forward is going to be very public, that we don't have a determined use that's been approved by anyone. We have to propose that to the city and to the community, and that will happen over the next couple of months so that folks can, in fact, look at what's being proposed, look at architectural renderings, look at the job creation, and have the opportunity to ask any questions that they may have. But the property, in fact, uh, will be on the city's property. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. At this time, we're going to hold a public hearing. Um, public hearing in rules of council. Each side will have 30 minutes. That would be 30 minutes for the opposition and 30 minutes for those who are in favor. Um, I'd like to see a show of hands. Have 
prevented you from planning to speak in opposition. Okay, it looks like 10 or 12. So, what I will do is each person will have three minutes to speak. That might take you a little over the 30 minutes, but let's give each person three minutes to speak. Um, and if you would line up in the middle of the center aisle, that will make it go a little more quickly. I'm going to count one more time because we have 15 and we drop it back to two minutes.
wonderful programs that they will offer to residents within the city. As a neighborhood, as taxpayers, as residents, as parents, as community members, as members of the community who would like to and try to be engaged in public discourse, we are formally and respectfully asking that you take the West Hampton School out of the Redskins deal. We understand, um, excuse me, we have repeatedly within the past three years since Richmond Community High School has vacated the property asked about the fate of the West Hampton School and we have been concerned about the possibilities and um, very engaged and, and interested in having a public bid and public proposal process that would allow for the community to have at least nominal input into what would go on that site. In addition, the playground is one of the busiest in the city. It is a crucial benefit to members of the community living in that neighborhood. Um, as, as the, we had a meeting last Thursday with the mayor and Council Member Tyler and Suzette Dinslow, Mark Ollinger, and other members of um, the mayor's office. We, we again, I do not want to go on too long, but want to respectfully submit that potentially another site in the city could be offered to Bond Secours, which would fulfill the obligations and allow for this benefit to accrue to the members of the city, but to please allow for a public process to evaluate the best possible adaptive reuse of the existing structure of the West Hampton School to the benefit of the community of, of the district. Um, and once again, we ask this out, out, as members of the public, as residents, as parents, and as concerned citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies, excuse me. I'm going to ask the rules of hands on for applause, so I'm going to ask you to respect those, please. Thank you. Said I had a name. Said I had a name. Anyway, I like the Cowboys. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I'm listening to what the presentation had to say. It's hard to need to identify yourself first. Hi, my name is Elle Shirley and Harvey. Um, I, I heard the presentation and I'd like to understand more about what they said. I'm surprised that there was only one question. I have several questions sitting over there and one of them was, there, they said there were 1,960 employees, I think, that worked at Bond Secures uh, or from the city of Richmond. I like to make sure of that. But the other thing, when, whenever we bring something here to the city of Richmond, we should be making sure that the people of Richmond get the job. Not only that they get the jobs, but that they get the training for the jobs. If you're going to do this anyway, which is what you usually do, um, you need to make sure that that happens. We have more than have had for more than 35 years a poverty rate of over 25%. If we're going to have businesses here in the city of Richmond, our people should be a part of it, especially if we're planning on giving away anything. Um, I like to make sure that you know that we should do right by the people in the city. I cannot understand how the Catholic Church and the Redskins got together. That does not make sense. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Melvin Jones, and uh, I'm in the opposition of this project because of the fact that the governor just made a statement um, I think it was Saturday or Sunday that put a freeze on um, doing any money lending, uh, you know, freeze on buying anything or doing anything. So I think the city ought to do the same thing for at least two months until we find out what the U.S. Congress is going to do. Um, you know, the city has always got to want to give all the money, but that's why I like Mr. Tyler because he was always watching over our purse of giving away money. But um, going back to the West Hampton thing, 
We got plenty of space over there by Brian Block, over there by Bird Press. I mean, if you worry about the Redskins coming down 95, they were coming on the bus, all you got to do is get off on 64 and you'd be right there at the end of Brian Park. I mean, you could, you could put that instead of taking West Hampton because they got a nice playground over there for the kids and it's a nice area. And you already got a problem with Nar School. You need to put the kids somewhere else, you can put them in West Hampton. So my thing is, while we can't look at Brian Park, the back end where Bird Press is, you got a lot of space over there. You won't hurt none of the greenery. You won't hurt none of the walking trails up the front. You can put part of it back there. And you can get the State Department, they can put an exit right there off of 64, off of 95 to 64, and you can go right in the back way, and it won't bother nobody. It'll be a real nice sight. And you still can go to the one on um, Lee Street also from 64. So everything is right there. Hey, somebody hasn't even looked at this project good because you could actually do it at Brian Park, at the end of Brian Park, at the back end where Bird Press is. And like I said, if they wanted to go to the other site, they could still get on 64 at Glens, I mean at um, Staples Mill and go, like, and go down to Lee Street and you'd be right at the other site. So you could do it that way and still keep West Hampton. Because we need another, we need that school right now to help the kids out that's going to law and most of it. I mean, you know, you turn the school down and you don't have nowhere to put the kids. So, you know, I'm kind of for this project, but we need to kind of like, kind of look at it, please. And just hold, hold, hold off for two months, please. Because uh, we need to see what Congress is going to do. And like I said, the governor already said he's putting a freeze on money. So nobody came up there saying anything about what the governor is going to do. Somebody needs to come across the street over here and talk to y'all about that. I'm serious. I mean, he says nothing right now until the first of the year. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Charles Evans Hughes, Senior from Southside. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you? How are you? Richmond has some land. <coughs> Who or what is Richmond? Richmond is people. Richmond is people dividing into nine parts. Each part has a chosen person to represent it. This person does the will of the people in that part. The head is a long way from the toes, but on the same body. The west end is a long way from the east end. All the parts are like this, but all a part of Richmond. All nine parts should have a say when money is involved. Likewise, all the people of Richmond should have a say. Not just a few bullets, but all the citizens have a vote. All the citizens have a vote, yes or no, on this Redskin deal. Whatever side wins, that should be the answer. Professional football has murderers, rapists, wife and girlfriend beaters, drunkards, drug takers, child molesters, etc. And you want to put this project next to a children's science museum. Richmond is very fortunate to have people that can tell the future. The mayor, council person Samuels, etc. These people can tell you how many thousands of dollars the city will make just like the 6th Street Market Main Street Station, School Board, Upper City Hall, etc. Boy, a whole lot of money wasted. Maybe the mayor can tell how much this half-assed street paving all over the city when frozen water seeps in all the cracks and the joints and the, of the back top will cost us the citizens. We deserve better. Another thing. This bicycle event. Nobody else wanted it, so Richmond brags about getting it when we were the only ones there to ask for it. It is a crying shame, a shame that the citizens, each citizen, each one.
some of you council people should go to every citizen in your district and find out whether or not they want this thing up here. You don't even know some of the people in your district. I know one person that knows everybody in there, though. Y'all need to shape up. Don't be blowing that money like you've been doing all along. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Madam President, Councilman Tyler. My name is John Monaghan, uh, representing myself here to speak in opposition to this blanket resolution, resolution in support of the proposed deal. I'm unable to comment on the economics of this deal, and I will also refrain from commenting on the prudence of using public opinion as leverage in this multi-million dollar real estate deal. I would like to ask the City Council to vote no on this blanket resolution in support of this multi-million dollar real estate deal. I'd also like to respectfully remind the City Council that parks and playgrounds enjoy special protection under the City of Richmond's zoning ordinance. It seems to me that with the West Hampton School property being zoned residential, that either a special use permit or an amendment to the zoning map would be the only two vehicles available to install office buildings or a medical complex in a residential area. We all recall that a special use permit was used, or Bon Secours obtained a special use permit to build a guest house along Libby Avenue. West Hampton School differs in one vital respect from the guest house site and that it is home to parks and playgrounds. My specific request, or the specific reason that I ask you to vote no on this blanket resolution is because a blanket resolution implies or proposes that we uproot the top lot, which personally my daughter enjoyed very much and I can attest that many, many, many happy children enjoy it. Let's not uproot the top lot. In fact, a special use permit is not available to the City Council to interfere with or to adversely affect a playground. And that's in the zoning ordinance, which is the law of the land intended to preserve the character of neighborhoods and to assure home buyers of the stability that they can enjoy when they invest in the City of Richmond. So please vote no on this resolution. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Madam President, uh, Vice President, members of council. My name is Rick Tatmall, and I'm uh, in the 7th District. Richmond City Council is being asked to make some huge and hasty decisions regarding a lot of city money and important city property because Mayor Jones apparently made a huge and hasty decision to say yes to Governor McDonald when, that he could make a Redskins camp work in 2013 including finding $500,000 a year for the, for the team for the first three years. Unfortunately, the mayor did not move quickly enough in due diligence and completely neglected the public input part of the process, as shown tonight. I am here today to ask you to postpone all decisions until more information has been presented to the new council and the citizens of Richmond. If this means we postpone for a year the coming of the Redskins, then they will have to do their training camp in the friendly confines of Redskins Park for one more year. Beyond the lack of due diligence and public input, there is a serious lack of transparency as to the complete details of this project. The mayor and his staff are only talking about the benefits of this deal, especially jobs and health care, which are certainly needed. What about the costs of this deal, which are not being discussed or being minimized? I attended last week's Redskins uh, meeting at the Science Museum, and tonight's information is the same as being presented. The information packet does not speak to one piece of cost in this project. Ms. Denzel referred to them tonight, but they were not a part of the uh, PowerPoints that were presented, including $500,000 a year for three years, including the interest and other costs of the loan to the EDA, including a huge $7 million West Hampton School property, the cost of the RRHA properties that are going to be transferred to Bonds of Cores, and the expenses involved with closing 27th Street in East End, and the tonight defined $30,000 a year cost to rent the Science Museum property. In addition to these issues, the Chamorro and economic impact numbers are both incomplete.
complete and totally unrealistic. They completely, they are incomplete because they only promote the income numbers and not the expense numbers. What about the additional police expense on training campaigns? What about the watering and maintenance expense of the fields? What about the intangible loss of a park currently used by many members of the community? In addition to these being incomplete, the numbers are also unrealistic for many reasons. The projection of 100,000 people coming to the camps is higher than currently coming to the residents' camps. The projection of 100,000 does not account for the Mid-Atlantic region residents who currently go to Loudoun County and will not spend additional money and will not be an overnighter here in Richmond. And the projection that 40% of the 100,000 attendees will be overnighters is just not possible, especially in this economy. Just as they have done in Loudoun, the vast majority of people will come and go on the same day. Bottom line, there are too many unanswered questions for this council to vote on anything tonight, and I ask you to postpone all decisions until the new council is seated. If the city is going to spend this amount of money of its own money, people making the decision should be the ones that will be in place to follow through. If you're going to vote on this this evening, I ask that you vote against supporting the mayor's plan as presented, and you vote against any alteration to the city's bond ordinance. Firstly, if the city is going to lend itself $9 million, I would prefer that money went to start to fix our roads. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam Chairman, distinguished members of council, my name is Mary Jane Hogue, and I'm the Executive Director of Historic Richmond Foundation. And I'm here to speak on behalf of Historic Richmond to advocate for the protection of the architectural treasures of our city. I, I hope I'm hearing correctly that one of those historic structures is not at risk with the real estate deal for the Redskin training camp. West Hampton School was built in 1917, 95 years old, by a renowned architect, Charles Robinson. Mr. Robinson is known for many buildings in Richmond, including Fox Elementary, Genter Park Elementary, Thomas Jefferson High School, Millen Roads, and even partnered with Marcellus Wright for the new Altria Theater. Charles Robinson was also responsible for the original JNU campus, uh, buildings on the campus of Washington and Lee, William and Mary, University of Mary Washington, Virginia State University, just to mention a few. West Hampton School is both a neighborhood and an historic landmark. We strongly request that before any real estate deal is solidified, that the city only transfers West Hampton School with conditions that an adaptive reuse of the building be a part of the deal with appropriate infill additions behind and around it. West Hampton has been a landmark in Richmond's West End for decades. To demolish it will not only lose an architectural treasure, but a significant streetscape change in Richmond. It will also erode the real estate tax base of the surrounding neighborhood, along with the architectural inte integrity of the block. We hope that homeowners and taxpayers can be part of the conversation. The Redskins are a wonderful addition to the Richmond landscape. But their new training camp should not jeopardize a landmark nor the characteristics of a neighborhood without full consideration of options other than bulldozing. Through the years, some have thought HRF is senseless to advocate for old buildings such as Old City Hall, the National Theater, Linden Road, the 200 block of West Franklin Street, Churchill's neighborhoods. Yet, people marvel today that those buildings were ever even considered for demolition. As a director of a nonprofit, it is my responsibility to use donors' dollars responsibly. Taxpayer dollars should be used as diligently as nonprofit resources. Thank you for granting time to the community to solidify and establish the facts to best consider the uses for this treasured green space and neighborhood and historic landmarks. We uh, are really thrilled to hear that there really is consideration not tearing down this building. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President, members of council. My name is Stuart Carter. I'm here tonight to represent the West New Civic Association and uh, our comments on the process to date for determining the future use of the West Hampton School. 
Our boundaries include Maple Avenue, the Grove to Patterson, the west side of Libby, and the offshoots of both of those streets. And you can see we're very interested in what happens with this very large parcel in our neighborhood. Um, as noted by others, we're concerned with the process to date. This lacked openness and transparency, and most importantly, input from our civic association. Other civic associations have noted they've also been cut out of the process. Um, as was noted about St. Mary's, we did all attend the charrette in 2009, and I would note the headline of the Richmond Times Dispatch St. Mary's will include neighbors in the planning process. <coughs> Uh, so far, that hasn't happened from the St. Mary's side or the city side, and that's distressing to us. We'd like to ask, and respectfully ask, that you include us in future discussions in a meaningful way, not with a preordained outcome, but we would like to be able to get information. For example, I know you've done an economic impact study. Where's the neighborhood impact study? Um, Maple Avenue, if you travel that way, the great um, amount of traffic there, according to the BCU uh, urban planning program, was St. Mary's and St. Christopher School, uh, with a 75,000 square foot medical office building, employees, patients, and others there. Uh, we'd like to find out what the impact is on Maple Avenue, where a large number of our members live, and hope that you would take the time to put a study together for that uh, crime, safety, environmental factors. It's equally important to us, just as the economic impact study is equally important to the city. We'd like to have another side of the story. So we'd like to ask to be, have some information provided to us, other neighbors, allow us to be in the process of discussing this in a meaningful way. And um, we'd like to ask that you postpone this until we have the opportunity to do so. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good evening, members of council and Madam President. My name is Marion Agnew. Uh, I live in the van, and I speak on behalf of those who use the Peace Street Park. In case you haven't visited it lately, it looks like a golf course. It is not a derelict piece of property. It's a place where we and our dogs walk every day. And there are going to be more people like us as people get older. So I would suggest to you that it is in the interest of the city of Richmond to keep these areas where people can walk comfortably and recreate and be in nature as some person who I met the other day said, this is our little piece of country in the city. And it truly is. We all love it. And it is the closest part to the lower end of the fan where people can walk. So I would first of all say, please uh, pay attention to that. My other comment um, is that after having practiced law and saving parks and recreation areas in Northern Virginia for 30 years, this is one of the slickest operations I have ever seen to move, to move public property to private economic development at no cost, literally, to those who are receiving the benefit. The Redskins are a wonderful team. I raised four boys and I am a devoted Redskins fan. But they are an industry. A National Football League team is an industrial use. Now, the trick is how to get the Redskins here as an industry. And you've got a tremendous capability in the Chamberlain Industrial Park, which is very close to our wonderful uh, Virginia Union University, where they play football. And they don't have very much space to do that. They have simply two little fields. When the planning group approached Virginia Union, they wanted to use their fields for the Redskins, and of course, Virginia Union probably said, you've got to be kidding, we don't have any space here for you guys. But, what if a huge industrial facility, sports facility was built right there outside Virginia Union University, could accommodate four more ball fields, and what an inspiration it would be 
to those kids who were attending Virginia Union and giving them the kind of inspiration that they need. So, this is a Hail Mary pass for you guys. <laughs>
of our uh, uh, metropolitan base of 3 million people. Uh, the city of Richmond, a yeah, whole metropolitan area, is about a billion or thereabouts. And I just don't wonder how our mayor claims that the economic, economic studies will reap a windfall of, uh, I think it's probably 6.5 million, because I think the rest is going to be 2, 2 million, 6.5 6, 6 million a year, which is going to help Richmond. Uh, you know, personally, I think that this person that did this economic study probably uh, was also working in Wall Street. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilman, Councilwoman, should I wait for uh, Councilman Tyler to return? Or should I go yeah, I think but I'm, but I'm going to say something. I ask people who is going to speak. I ask for hands to be raised. I count them. I allotted everybody three minutes to fit within our 30 minute because that's how many people we had. But four or five people have joined the line with being one. So I'm going to ask you to please make remarks. Very careful, very brief. Way over our third minute. I want everybody to have a chance, but I did ask in the beginning. Who's speaking? Okay. My name is Lisa Taranto, and I'm uh, here speaking on behalf of the Alliance for Progressive Values. And I want to take a little bit of a bigger picture idea about the Redskins and Bonds Corps project. While we're not opposed to the Redskins being here, um, nor are we opposed to hospitals, what I would like for you all to consider is that are expansions of hospitals really a, a symbol of a healthy community or are they a symbol of a unhealthy community? In our opinion, more hospitals means that we have a less healthy community. And we would like for you to consider putting an investment into building healthier communities. Now, I think we all know that the diabetes industry is about $300 billion a year, cancer is about $100 million. $28 billion a year. All these numbers are great for the gross domestic product. We are measuring the health of our communities on how unhealthy we are. So in investing in this project, we would like you to consider making an equivalent investment into building healthy communities. Both the Redskins and Bonds and Coors have our uh, well-endowed corporations. $1.6 billion with the Redskins, I'm not sure, Bonds and Coors. Not worth this, but I'm, I'm we're sure it's pretty high. So, in considering what we are doing in building health in our, and wealth in our communities, I ask you all to consider in a bigger picture what do you consider to be health and wealth for all of us, not just for corporations. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Elliot Howard. I'm a resident of the 1st District. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I will be brief. Um, I'm here to oppose this resolution. I have concerns about the proposed transaction with Redskins, but I'm specifically addressing the proposal to lease uh, the West Hampton School to Bonds Corps on three grounds. First, the financial terms of the proposal, I think, are terrible for the city. As you may know, the city assessment is $7.5 million for this property. Uh, if you assume that land would sell for $5 million, which I think is quite reasonable in today's market, and you invested that at 8%, that would generate $400,000 a year for the city. As it is, the, ground, the initial term of the ground lease is for 60 years. If you used a similar 8% discount rate, that would generate over the 60 years, the present value of those 60 years worth of ground rent is $65,000. I repeat, $65,000. Secondly, and, and equally importantly, this sets a terrible precedent. This is one of the first times I can recall that we're having economic development considerations trump uh, community planning. Um, Although the, this is publicly on land, this is the very issue that people voted on when they approved the amendment to the state constitution the other day because people were concerned about municipal bodies taking property and using it for economic development purposes and ignoring the wishes of residents. That's particularly so in this case because I, along with hundreds of others of people, participated over the course of the year in 2011 in an extensive public planning process for an update to the master plan for this area, which was conducted by this city's planning department. 
the citizens were very clear that they did not want the hospital to expand. What they wanted and needed in this area was housing, particularly housing that is smaller in nature for people who want to remain in that neighborhood and age in place. I think it's disappointing that the bonds course, to the best of my knowledge, never indicated what their plans were and never reached out to the community. I think there would have been an opportunity to perhaps provide some housing that would allow people to age in place and use the medical facilities that, or the excellent facilities Bonds of course has. The last is transparency. I find it very surprising I, as a member of the Housing Authority, have, have participated in a total of four different community outreach efforts. Dove Court, Gilpin Court, Whitcomb, and Craven. In fact, I'll be doing that tomorrow. It's been an extensive, lengthy process of input for what the people in those communities want. So um, I have to say I'm extremely disappointed with the city administration and the bonds taking this approach. Thank you. 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 Good evening. My name is Edward Ross. Uh, I'm a resident of the West Hampton area, and I am a member of the West Hampton Citizens Association. I'd like to speak in opposition of this proposal as it has been presented. The construction of a 75,000 square foot building with no mention of the preservation of the historic building. It's assumed that this building is to be formally storage, as has been mentioned earlier, will require a special use permit. Our locality is losing control of neighborhood participation in the project. Where are the plans for this medical building? The city and Bon Secours seem to be in a partnership. We question, is, is there a conflict of interest? Financial transparency is missing, as are the details of the projected income to the city taxpayers. There are too many unknowns. The city is agreeing on a concept but unclear about specifics. Why did the city not accept this, a public bid process for this valuable piece of property? It's a very expensive economic development package of $10 million that needs to be raised for a bond referendum for an eight-year rent scheme commitment for only three weeks of use per year. The property for the practice fields and training facilities is being leased from the state so what happens after the eight years when the Redskins leaves? Who owns the property or the facility? After 10 years, the training facility building goes back to the city. In 15 years, the land goes back to the state. Von Secours is spending $6.3 or $4 million toward the Redskins training facility, and the city is getting a return of $300,000 paid over a 60-year period. This $5,000 per year lease amounts to a monthly lease of approximately $416. Most city taxpayers spend more than three times this amount in city real estate estate taxes. What happens at the end of a 60-year lease? I'd like to also mention no, no traffic studies have been done. We're concerned about parking, pedestrian traffic, street gates, crosswalks, and environmental concerns. Also, where is the city going to get the $4 million a year that is needed, $4 million that is needed in sponsorship over this eight year period? I would like to request that you oppose this project that's been presented and there's still more study that needs to be done. I think it's been very poorly presented to our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I thank all those who have spoken so far. And can I see a show of hands of how many of you speak in favor of this? All right. Let's have um, those who are in favor of this project. If you could also line up, that would be helpful.
I am neither for or against, but this is what I would like to say. I had the opportunity to attend the, me the meeting at the Science Museum with many who are present here. This is how the field impacts me and my community. I'm here almost every day on my bike with my dog. Yes, there is another park not too far from me, but I don't have the liberty to use my bike and to take my dog. And I also taught my daughter how to drive around this field, so if I help you all, she's a good driver now. And then uh, it's also a green space for many of my neighbors. There's also, some of you may or may not know, a cyclocross practice. Cyclocross is what many cyclists do after the bike season ends, the road season ends. And so we use the field and uh, we, we practice. It's on Tuesday evenings at 6. And we recently moved it near the tennis courts because of the light. It is well maintained and well patrolled. My family, my neighbors, we all really enjoy this beautiful green space. When I attended the meeting last week, James Farr from EDA said the process was as such. The process was involved with the Redskins, the corporate sponsors, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and the Science Museum. And I guess the part that was missing, it was very, very clear to me, where are the people? Where are my neighbors? Where's the community? And I did not hear that that evening. What I'm urging everyone to do is visit this beautiful park. It does not have gorgeous architecture. I appreciate gorgeous architecture, but there's nothing there that needs to be torn down or that needs to be preserved. I just want to see, I want, to, I want more answers. And uh, I would also like my tax dollars to finish some other projects. There's another stadium that needs lots of answers. That's not a part of this conversation, but I think there are other projects that are really, that I want to see finished that's close to my heart. I am not, well, I'm more respectful than a football fan, but I want to see projects that's going to benefit my neighborhood. I've been in the city since the 80s. I raised a family here. And I will support anything that's uh, for the benefit of my community. So what I'm urging people to do is visit the park, and let's work on all this together. And you know, I'm not in a place right now where I can say I am for or against, but I think we need to have more dialogue with more people. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Brian Harding, and I'm the chair of the Richmond Business Council of the Greater Richmond Chamber. And uh, I'm here tonight to uh, support this resolution on behalf of the Virginia Council. We believe this is a winning economic package, and the Richmond Business Council stands behind it. Beyond the obvious economic benefits of added jobs and tax revenue, uh, it will facilitate the path for wellness projects that will lift revitalization efforts, which strengthen the entire city and anchor our region. We have engaged with our friends at Bonds of Course Community Hospital. Uh, to understand their leadership efforts and vision around redevelopment in the East End Transformation Plan. Uh, what we have observed is nothing less than remarkable. Uh, examples of the SEED program uh, demonstrate that. Uh, and there's a component in this Redskins deal that expands health services to areas in dire need of trans transformation, such as the East End. This collaboration between the Redskins and the city and Boston Corps is a partnership of shared values and community and success. Richmond is a community of real progress and camaraderie. This package gives us the ability to put people to work and support positive health initiatives while bringing everyone together to rally behind a national team. Please consider this as a strong pro-business economic development opportunity as well as an equally strong community opportunity. Uh, it is good for our entire capital region, and we believe it will serve as a shining example of public-private partnerships that work for everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Madam President, members of City Council, my name is Jack Berry. I'm with the Richmond Metropolitan Convention and Visitors Bureau, and we're here to support the proposed site. Uh, 
One thing about the timing, it's July, August, which fits perfectly into family vacations. And when a visitor will come to the area and experience the campus next to the Children's Museum, next to the Science Museum, next to the Boulevard, it'll be huge exposure for extending that family vacation. And I'd like to give an example of people for attending Picasso as recent as yesterday, yesterday's weekend with the sports batters. You have tens of thousands of visitors at some displaced runners who came to the Richmond region to do run the marathon, to see Picasso, to see Chihuly. My point is that we've conducted studies on intercept visitors. 44% of visitors plan to return to Richmond because they had such a wonderful time, and 90% will eventually come. The secret of our success are repeat visitors. And this, if it's 10,000, 100,000, 200,000 visitors, bringing them will just be an investment on the infrastructure for tourism. The other thing I'd like to point out is we commissioned VCU for a study on the highest occupancy weekends in the calendar year of 2011, and we'll be continuing on doing this every single year. In 2011, the top 10 weekends were involving, with highest occupancies in hotels, involved sports. The only exception in the top 10 was Hurricane on Green, which is, of course, Labor Day into August and September. But at the end of the story, tourism is supported by sports, and it's a huge investment on the infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, my name is Robert Bullock. Um, the affected area in the East End is exactly where I grew up, born and raised at. I had an opportunity to see bond security come up from the child and seeing all the houses in my neighborhood. I live right on 28th and 9th Mile directly across the street from the hospital. The hospital has been a, Johnson Pools has been a great neighbor. Um, ultimately, they, they had uh, things for us when we were young, as far as for the um, Harvest Fest. They also had health screenings every year. Um, ultimately, I think that this, uh, this entity and building something new over there is beneficial to that community, especially my community, being born and raised there all my life. I love the Redskins with all my heart. I've been a Redskins fan all my life. And I think it's imperative that people need to understand that I take that trip to um, Redskins Park every year. And it's tons of Richmond residents, not just me, it's hundreds and thousands of Richmond residents that I see friends, neighbors, uh, foes, everybody at the Redskins Park. And I mean, if you can look at my Facebook friends, we got pictures of Redskins Park along with, with the governor being there this year and going to see RG3. So ultimately, I think it's very important that we do bring this here and the economic and impact that we bring here to Richmond is essential to everything that we need. You don't understand how much money our economic impact and will generate and they don't understand the tourism will jump out the roof. I mean, ultimately, once they realize the things that we have in Richmond, it's a lot of things, and I got friends calling me trying to find places to stay, knowing things that's, that's coming from New Jersey, as far as D.C., all the way from North Carolina to Florida. Ultimately, I mean, it's very important that we understand that this is a great economic impact for all, and it can really help the city of Richmond. I think it's great that we bring the Redskins here, and I think it will be great for all citizens of Richmond. Thank you. Madam President and Council, thank you so much for allowing me to speak. My name is Ray Kaufman. I and my wife own a home across the street from St. Mary's Hospital, and we are very much in favor of, of this proposal, mainly because um, the West Hampton School, as I see it, having lived there for three years, has been an empty school building. Uh, it is very possible that it would remain that way if nothing were to happen with it. I do understand that uh, some people are calling for a uh, a bid process. I read in Richmond Biz Sense last morning, yesterday morning, that one of those proposals was for that uh, a lot to be turned into a Walgreens apartment, uh, excuse me, a Walgreens drugstore, uh, which personally I think does nothing for the neighborhood. Um, I have been able to watch one score in action with regard to other projects that they've done, one such being the guest house, which has been mentioned earlier. 
Um, I've never seen an organization bend over backwards to accommodate the requests from the community as much as Bond Support has for that particular project. There were major changes made to that project, moving it back from the street, moving the building back itself, um, changing the facade in front of the building. Um, every time it seemed like every community meeting that I attended, uh, Bond Support was willing to accommodate the people making requests, and to me that's unheard. And I just am not accustomed to seeing that, having lived in Southern California for almost 30 years, that, that's just remarkable to me. As far as uh, opening up that lot to uh, the West End School lot to something else, there's absolutely no guarantee that that building will remain. Uh, in fact, I think that uh, it probably would be open up. As it is, we heard earlier this evening that uh, they're going to try as much as they possibly can to at minimum keep the facade, if not more, of that building. I think that's that's extremely important to the neighborhood. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir. Good evening, uh, Madam President, members of City Council. I'm John Ludville with the Sports Backers, and we're very supportive of, of this initiative for, for two main reasons. One, uh, the sports tourism opportunity here is significant, and uh, we certainly think the Redskins are a draw, and there's a whole publicity awareness component that comes with uh, having a training camp for the NFL team here. So that publicity and awareness will be focused on Richmond for, for three weeks. Um, but more importantly, the other 49 weeks of the year, we're very committed to work with Bon Secours, the Redskins, and the city to make this facility work for our community on an ongoing basis. Um, just like the sports back responsible is, is extremely committed to making our community more healthy and physical activity is something that we're both focused on together. Uh, one thing that uh, both bond supporters and city economic development people would know is I often raise hard questions and meetings about how things get done and, and really push and, and press for, for real change. And uh, I know that bond supporters is committed uh, to making a real difference, and we see that in the East End on a regular basis. They've been partners with uh, a number of different initiatives there that are making a real difference, and we see this as an opportunity to expand that and uh, look forward to working uh, with both Bonsecours and the Redskins to make our community uh, even more vibrant uh, throughout the year. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President and Honorable Council. My name is Joe Rudisill. I'm a resident of the West Hampton uh, neighborhood. Um, for the record, I'm from a small town in North Carolina. I came to Richmond seven years ago because of the National Reputable University. And I stayed in Richmond because of the promise that Richmond has. I always hear about the up-and-coming neighborhoods. I don't know how many years in a row I've heard that Church Hill is up-and-coming or certain parts of the area is up-and-coming. I think people stay, people hold on to those promises and the bigger vision of Richmond as a whole. Um, and for the record, I'm a Carolina Panthers fan. I love the Panthers, but they're terrible. But, but you see the same devotion to the Redskins. Yes, it's sports, but at the same time, it's also about building healthier communities through sports. And I think that's what we have to see. We have to start, we have to stop, we have to start seeing the forest through the trees in this scenario. We keep getting, being held back by various barriers along the way. So it's a challenge to the city council to kind of see the bigger picture and the better of the entire community. Our impact not only has an impact on Richmond as a whole, but the greater commonwealth of Virginia. So today, I guess, what is the risk to the city's image and reputation if we don't proceed? And what if the Redskins don't come? It's not just going to be an article of RTD or ABC 12. It's going to be the article of the Washington Post and even the ESPN. We're going to be the city that's known for the city that can't get the deal done. Our beloved Braves left, who were unable to land the NASCAR Hall of Fame under the last administration, and now we can't land the Redskins. How does that make us look like in the national spotlight? We have a city with so much promise and so much history. We could have been what Charlotte, North Carolina is today. Two major professional franchises, the home of many national banking institution headquarters, but still, we're kind of dragging our feet when the big decisions have to be made. We have a 27-year-old minor league baseball stadium. Let's give the community something more than the 27-year-old minor league baseball stadium. Let's give them hope, let's give them vision, let's help our community build a healthier community. 
Is it what the, the people in this community deserves? So, let's think about what positive impact the Redskins can not only offer Greater Richmond, like I said before, the Commonwealth of Virginia. We have a great opportunity at hand, and let's not let this one slip through our fingers as well. Thank you for your time, Stephen. Thank you, sir. <coughs> absolutely thrilled about the opportunity for the Redskins to come to our city. Um, we heard tonight about the very significant and positive economic impact it will have on the city. I think the fact that we have leadership from the Richmond Convention and Visitors Bureau, sports backers, and um, the Richmond Chamber speaks volumes to that. Uh, that opportunity would not be available to the city without the support of Bond Support and their successful collaboration working with the city of Richmond. And due to that um, very successful collaboration, they also have the ability to refurbish and revitalize the beautiful but empty West Hampton School. Um, I think that Bond Support has done a phenomenal job in communicating with the residents of that area, including myself. Um, and I ask that you support this resolution tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's bring this back to council for discussion. Uh, Madam President, yes, sir, Mr. Powell. Gee, imagine this. Um, you know, before I get started earlier tonight, I, I was impressed with the bell at the moment who said uh, this is a Hail Mary pass. I actually think this was a Hail St. Mary pass. So, anyway, sorry for bad <laughs> This neighborhood is a, is a middle class neighborhood, houses, 
there are 67 homes on that side of the street. Their average, if you take all 67 and lump them together, their, their total, their average sales price is $211,000. It's not the million dollar homes that everybody thinks about in the first district. These are folks, this is their major asset. They decided to plant a stake in the city of Richmond because they had faith in us. And they had faith in the hospital. And they had faith in the city of Richmond. The system that everyone involved in the process was going to be fair and open and honest. That's what, that's what they did. They get up every morning. They go to work. This is their biggest asset. It's not like they got home at the river and one at the ski lodge. This is, their, this is their life. And while we're all talking about economic development for the city, we're turning our back on them. We're turning our back on them. And since when do we start showing our side to one side of the city and turning our back on the other? That's not what this city is about. That's not what I'm about, and I don't think that's what we're about. I think if we could take two weeks and have the citizens in the West Hampton community get together, it would be completely different. I think we wouldn't even have had this conversation, right? I think the icing on the cake came uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the gentleman's right uh, who came down here that came from California. Uh, we were doing a special use permit for a lot of in St. Mary's Hospice House, uh, Hospitality House for folks who are in need. And this neighborhood said, we are willing to work with you on that. And they went out and the design was done with some input from the community, but not a lot. And then they came back and they presented it, and we got into a very good and honest and open negotiation. In the very last meeting where the Civic Association approved that special use permit and said, Councilman Tyler, we release you to go vote for it. That very meeting, a citizen of that civic association stood up and said, the Wednesday before the Monday meetings that the Redskins were announced uh, about the, the deal that came in place, they asked the administrator, is, it, is Bonds of course have anything that they're doing with West Hampton School? Are they negotiating on this deal right on West Hampton School right now? And the administrator looked him in the eye. Didn't turn, didn't flinch, didn't back away. Look at him and said, no, we're not doing anything. We're not even thinking about it, is what she basically said to him. And then to come to City Hall on Monday at 1237 with Ms. Suzette Denslow and Mr. Marshall to have a meeting and then learn about it, and then learn about it, that there was a deal going on and that this administrator had basically misrepresented all the good that the hospital has and all the good that the hospital does. They wronged this community. They hurt this community. And it's not the sisters that do this, and I know this, and in my heart of course, for me to have to say. I wish you would take the time to think about the 67 families that are struggling in this neighborhood, that need your help, that need your prayers, that need your thoughts. And think about it, and pull this resolution off for two weeks, or split it apart tonight. Go forward with, with the resolution saying we're all for the residents, because we are. But let's have the open dialogue that we need to have. I don't know any other way of doing it. It's called open and honest government. It's the only way I know how to do anything is to put all the cards on the table and to be truthful with people. And that's what I've tried to do here tonight. Um, I would hope that the sisters and bond supporters would think about this, allow for our community to come together and have a good dialogue. I will do anything to facilitate it. I will be at any time, you know, this Saturday, this Sunday, this, you know, pick a time where we can bring the community in and have a dialogue. There were a lot of misconceptions tonight or misstatements made about the economics of it. Uh, you know, and folks, I wish you, you know, and I can understand why you said it, because you don't know about it. You don't know about it. You have no time to learn about it. Um, I'm going to close by saying I, I hope my council members will see where I'm coming from and understand that my heart is aching and that it's 
time for us to do the right thing, pass a resolution that says we're for the Redskins, and then ask for time for the, the city administration and for the bonds to get in the room with the community, and I will, I'll facilitate it. I will do everything in my power to try to restore the faith that this community should have in the city government and that they should have in the process, of course. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I too, um, I heard, uh, I heard over and over issues, uh, concern about the absence of transparency in this field. Uh, I'm troubled, uh, Mr. Tyler, as well. That I wasn't briefed on this until today.
invite uh, the will of council uh, to go forward to see if we can do a deal. Part two has to be dedicated to making sure it's the best deal for all concerned. And these folks have made some serious concerns about, uh, about how we go forward on this thing uh, and who's going to benefit. Thank you. 
require the city to sign a contract. It doesn't require uh, the city to do anything. It is just the endorsement of an idea. Is this something the city council believes makes good sense in general? Tonight, we received or we're going to receive shortly a ton of papers that are going to be the details of this project. I think it's around <coughs> six or seven different papers. And over the next few weeks and months, we'll be digging into the details and making sure that what sounds like a good idea in principle is or is not. But that's the way we're going to have to do this. Not by saying, yes, we'll do it tonight and then hope everything works out. We've got some long, hard hours in front of us as a city, the residents, the businesses, the council members, and the administration still, to see whether or not this truly is the good deal that it looks like it could be. Tonight's just, do we like the basic plan? Now, we can investigate the details. For those reasons, I am going to support this paper, but I will be paying very close attention to the actual financial details of the plan to ensure that it is a plan that makes good sense for the folks that I represent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sandhouse. Dr. Newell. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first, I'd like to um, simply say thank you to Bombs, of course, for its extraordinary partnership uh, in the East End of Richmond, mm -hmm. uh, working uh, consistently to improve the health of the community uh, in a community where, as I shared earlier, too many are dying too early and too often from very preventable and or treatable health conditions. And not just working to simply uh, increase the offerings in terms of uh, health services, but also to promote wellness uh, in this, uh, this uh, proposal. And wellness uh, in terms of uh, physical health, um, mental health and general well-being, but also economic health, uh, the types of grant opportunities that allow us to uh, pepper the commercial corridor with small businesses that increase employment opportunities and access to amenities that uh, the community sorely desires. This uh, particular uh, economic development package uh, is pretty unique. There are multiple components to it. Um, much of which you've heard uh, discussed thus far. But for me, it is uh, especially um, important because it addresses three major issues that are confronting our community. The need for increased revenue, the uh, impact on health status, not just in the East End, but throughout the city of Richmond, as this project will have, and the opportunity to create employment opportunities in a community where poverty and unemployment is such a major concern. And so I, uh, I did have an opportunity to have a briefing uh, uh, before today, and in, in addition to today, and asked about various financial scenarios that would allow us to take a look at and better understand the implications uh, for such an initiative with three components uh, as this has. And I think that um, we have received good information, but I still think there's more work to be done. And I think that uh, the, uh, in the coming weeks, months, we'll have that opportunity to vet the proposals, the financials, to better understand uh, the role of EPA in this and uh, what that means for the broader community. Again, this is uh, an expression of support for this uh, concept, this idea, this package. This is a resolution, it's not an ordinance. Again, as my colleagues have emphasized, it's not the letter of law. It simply conveys council's uh, desire uh, and uh, interest in this particular project as we see it, but clearly having uh, opportunity for further vetting uh, the details that will come to us. I think that there are some real concerns that have been raised that I will be equally as attentive to the engagement and involvement of the community and input from those who uh, live in and near uh, the
this proposed development, preservation of the building uh, is equally uh, a concern, as well, again, as the financials and really doing due diligence uh, to make sure that um, this is the kind of project that it appears to be for our city. And so I, uh, again, applaud and thank Fox, of course, who are stepping up and defining health is not just the absence of illness, but after promotion of wellness, both physical, mental, economic, uh, in this kind of way, and partnering with us in, in our city and uh, looking to have multiple impacts as this project will. Um, I uh, will be supporting this resolution and look forward to vetting uh, the, uh, with greater specificity the various components as they come forward. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Madam President. <coughs> Excuse me, this is a, a, a difficult decision, uh, but essentially it will come down to me that uh, this body made a commitment to Christian public schools that the purchase of surplus properties that Christian public schools had uh, surplus back in the city proceeds from those sales uh, would go back to uh, public schools and the maintenance uh, and expansion and enhancement of their facilities. And uh, what this proposes is that we lease this land to them. Uh, well, it, it, for $5,000 a year, $600 a month. And, um, is certainly a legal transaction, uh, but not one that I believe is in the spirit of what we committed to earlier. We can certainly give assurances uh, to the extent that we can, or we can try, uh, to let people know that we want to give them money uh, in the future of Richmond Public Schools in order to maintain their facilities. Uh, not all of the problems of Richmond Public Schools to be improved by money. Uh, but certainly I think we can all agree that their facilities can be and have to be improved by money and they are inadequate. And when you saw these young people here earlier this evening with the YMCA, I can't look them in the eye and say I did what was right for them by supporting this as it's currently presented. Seems to me that the $5,000 a year um, is an inordinate price for the city to pay for uh, what we're asking to do. I uh, believe that there could be a lot of benefits here, but it seems to me that a burden in hand uh, is worth four or five in the bush, and we can certainly promise and endeavor to do what we can for Christian public schools going forward. Uh, but the fact is that we cannot legally uh, require future councils to appropriate this money. Uh, but this property has been out there, it's been discussed. I don't think it's any surprise to anyone that Bond Supporters would like to have it. Uh, and if you express an interest in it, if you visit the hospital, their master plan seems to indicate this building is within it. Uh, and I understand that, but this is in no way a market rate uh, for this property, and I just cannot go along with it in its current structure. I'd love to be uh, on board with it, but I cannot look parents and students of Richmond Public Schools, look at them and honestly say that I think this is in their best interest as its current structure. I hope we can get a deal together but in its current form, I do not support this. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Hilbert. Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I agree with uh, what one of my colleagues has said. This job of uh, making tough decisions for the city is an extremely difficult one most of the time. Um, but I will say that um, people are feeling very good about the city of Richmond in a lot of ways. And they're feeling good about the progressive movement that the city is making and doing things and making decisions about the redevelopment of the city in a broader perspective.
while at the same time attempting to address some of the more critical needs that we have. Um, there are several elements of this, develop, this proposed development that uh, I am particularly pleased with. Um, I am particularly pleased with the fact that that there will be families, the city of Richmond and the East End, which includes the community of East End, that will have expanded health care services that are tremendously needed. I am very pleased with the fact that the administration found the wherewithal when we first heard about the Redskins considering Richmond I, there were all kinds of questions of how would we possibly be able to make this field work. And I would like to say that if it was not from the partners, um, I, I don't know that we would have been able to successfully make this field a reality. And so I'm especially pleased uh, that we have corporate response, corporate uh, sponsors here in the city of Richmond that's, that's considered Richmond a meaningful and valuable place to invest and to continue to grow and help us to build a strong workforce and provide quality health care. But we also have a state that has stepped up to the table and willing to work with us in a very cooperative partnership way to make a development opportunity that has uh, tremendous ripple effects possible on land that they own. Um, I will say the, the things that bothers me about this deal is the fact that, and that has bothered me by several deals that we have had to deal with and decisions that we've had to make in the city, is the time of this in which we have to really evaluate the information that is before us and make a decision. And I am hopeful, as we've been hopeful before, that, that those timelines will significantly be changed. Um, it's not fair to us, and it's not fair to the community when, when, when they feel as if a decision is being made without full vetting of the information and full appreciation exactly what will happen. I am grateful that this is a resolution, and as I look at the papers that are being introduced tonight as it relates to this, um, the finance committee stands for a cut out for it. Um, because a lot of those papers will be coming to the finance committee and also to the land use committee, where all of the concerns that have been expressed here tonight will have to be resolved, and they will have to be resolved with your input, um, they will have to be resolved with the number of meetings and the number of public meetings that is necessary that your voices are heard and that your uh, input and recommendation is taken into consideration as it relates to the final decision that is being made as regards to it. So, and it may mean that this council is going to have to have some extra meetings, not only the representatives of the prospective districts by which that I impacted, but this council as a whole. And, um, and I'm, I'll be the first to say you make that I make that commitment to you uh, as a city council that you will have an opportunity to be a part of this year. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we are working within a time constraint that the Redskins need to be here and on the ground, and there has been a lot of hard, aggressive work that's been done to try to put this package together and put this deal together. And I want to commend the mayor and his administration for the hard work that they've done to be able to bring these significant partners to the table, where the outlay on behalf of the city and the city's taxpayers' dollars is secured and that there isn't a giveaway here. Um, there is a loan, but there's a repayment <coughs> that's being proposed and being repaid in a very short period of time. So um, there's a lot more that will be discussed as it relates to this deal, and I just want to encourage the citizens to be engaged in this process and don't lose hope that your voice is not important and it will not be heard and be involved and really be shaping the final decisions as it relates to how we go about carrying out all three phases of the proposed development that is before us. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Ms. Robertson. Um, I have a couple of things that I'd like to say. One of the things that I would like to say at the outset 
is that um, is we have gone through this process of better understanding the needs of the Redskins. We have learned that the Redskins are committed to certain values that are common to those of the city. Um, the Redskins are committed to health. The Redskins are committed to youth. And as we strategized with them, it, it just became a natural fit with bond support, who was also committed to health and also committed to youth. And so that marriage, although somebody said tonight, I don't know how the skins and bond support is about to get it. If you think about it, it is a natural fit. This tonight, we are looking, as everybody has said, at a resolution. This is not an ordinance. This is council saying, we like this package. In terms of <coughs> West Hampton School, no, bond supports, if this bill goes forward and we move all the other papers, bond supports, yes, they will have the ability to have an office facility at that, at that location. However, the community will determine what that location looks like. We will go through a special abuse permit. The community will be involved every step of the way. How high is it going to be? What is the setback going to be? How many windows are you going to have in the front? That is what a special use permit does. So as this process moves forward, there will be total community involvement in what happens to that piece of property. I've heard also that that piece of property has been assessed at over $7 million. Well, that's true. But that's because that's the entire piece of property. Not just the piece of property where the school sits, but also the piece of property that has the fields, the bonds of cores, has said, we will maintain those fields. Probably, I hate to say it, better than the city, and they're going to spend $35,000 a year to maintain those fields. They are going to move the top line, and I'm sure that that move will be worked with the community. We have an offer here to the city of Richmond. Here in council, we have to look at the entire city. Me, I look at the city as a whole. And what's best for the city? We have an offer that is going to give us 115 square feet of development, $42 million in total investment, over 300 jobs, if you count the jobs with the Redskins, $19 million in annual payroll estimate, and community outreach, and three medical um, facilities, two of which are in areas where we need medical facilities and we don't have them. What we are saying tonight is we like this package. The devil, as they say, is in the details. We're going to get to the details. But tonight we're going to say, we like this. Let's go forward with it. And I think we're going forward. So, um, Mr. Clark, would you call the president? Madam President. Yes, sir. Just, since I had the pleasure of going first and listening to you all,
gestures to the same place. That person did something just for him. I know we can't do that. <coughs> Ms. Jamal, one thing that Mr. Tyler um, and, and I hear Mr. Tyler's promotion, we have before us a package. The package involves three facilities. If we take one of those facilities out of the package, then we know our have what we are saying tonight is that we, if we pass this, that we approve of the overall plan, that yes, there will be so much, there will be community development, there will be community input, community input, community input, because all we are saying on this is that we approve of the overall package, but the community is going to be able to weigh in on what that piece of property in terms of what the building will look like, sometimes even the hours of operation, the parking, the community has the ability to work through that special use permit. You have a lot of special use permits that come through your district and you know how it works. And that is a piece, that is a piece of the puzzle that will or of the proposal that will be dealt with as we move along. So that means um, if we don't pick it out of the package, it has to be combined all together. But we're going to give them, the citizens over there, like a chance to come to us because we're, we're saying absolutely this was to be a special use permit. Absolutely. Everything. I mean, anything. Because I've heard Ellen and I've heard you, and we're making that promise to those citizens in the first district. Because mm -hmm. I know that tonight someone said that they didn't know anything about this. If we're making that promise that it's going to go, I guess, back to land use or finance or whatever, because I know that some of it's in the papers right here, they are going to, if they want to go the task force or whatever, they can come to us because we're not going to break our promises to them. Well, we, what this resolution says, we, just, we approve the overall plan, and that is the three sites, the West Hampton School site, the East Street site, and the East End site. That's what we're saying. That is the fact. What happens on each of those properties, this particular one in West Hampton has to go through a special use permit because that, that use is not approved in zoning. So everything that happens on that property is going to have to be regulated by the special use permit. And those citizens will have to well, every opportunity. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. It's fine, of course. All right, we're not going to have any back and forth. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion. We have a motion and a second. Madam President, maybe I can step in and just say what this basically means to me is, is that we have three components. Uh, one, the West Hampton School, and if we approve this resolution as it was not amended but as stated initially, we are saying to, to the community we're going to allow on course to put in a non binding way, we're allowing. 75,000 square foot of building on a site which currently is not zoned for that. The second piece is we're going to put uh, a development down at, uh, behind the, the uh, Science Museum, which is for the Ridgeman's complex. And then the third piece, which I think the only thing the city really has a component in, is uh, over by the uh, uh, community hospital, the Christian community is the closing of a street. The rest of the property is private land that wants to force others or we will negotiate for. So those and, and so what we're saying there is we're going to allow for twenty five thousand square foot building. We were basically setting the framework up for the future. And so all we're going to be doing we, you know, what we're telling our the citizens is this is the deal as is. Yeah we'll negotiate a few things with you but this is the deal take it or leave it. This is what we're doing. And this is the first time they've heard about it. So I would respectfully request my colleagues uh, vote for the amendment and not the original paper. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? All right, call the vote. Councilman William and Councilman Tyler's amendment to item number 15, resolution number 2012 R 141. Mr. Samuels? No. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? No. 
Mr. Jewell? No. Ms. Newman? No. Ms. Trammell? No. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? No. That motion has not passed. Okay. So we have to be uh, call the question, Mr. Clerk. Council is moving on item number 15, resolution number 2012 R141. Mr. Sanders? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? No. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newman? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? No. President Graziano? Aye. That paper has been adopted. 